This is Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. Thank you for joining us on this Monday, June 9th, 2014. Here are the top 10 news stories that you need to know about right now. First today, according to NBC News, Israelis and Palestinians expressed measured optimism on Sunday as their respective leaders, Shimon Perez and Mahmoud Abbas, prepared to take part in a historic joint prayer meeting with Pope Francis at the Vatican. Catholic officials played down the significance of the meeting, saying it was not intended to be a political event. But the unusual summit with Jewish, Christian, and Muslim prayers intoned in the shadow of St. Peter's Basilica could take on great significance on the ground. As the leaders gathered in Rome, people on both sides of the divide told NBC News of their hopes that it could lead to progress in the deadlocked Middle East peace process. Second today, according to Arkansas Online, an Arkansas megachurch pastor is one of three men to be nominated as the next Southern Baptist Convention president during the denomination's annual meeting in Baltimore this week. The Reverend Ronnie Floyd, age 58, senior pastor of Cross Church in northwest Arkansas, will be nominated for the spot by the Reverend Albert Moeller, president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. Other expected nominees are the Reverend Jared Moore, age 33, pastor of New Salem Baptist Church in Hustonville, Kentucky, and the Reverend Dennis Kim, age 64, senior pastor at Global Mission Church of Greater Washington in Silver Springs, Maryland. The next president will succeed the largest Protestant denomination's first black president, the Reverend Fred Luter, pastor at Franklin Avenue Baptist Church in New Orleans. Luter is finishing his second term this year and is ineligible for re-election. Delegates, also known as messengers, will take part in the election during the annual convention, set for Tuesday and Wednesday in Baltimore. The meeting will follow the annual pastor's conference where Floyd is to speak tonight. The election comes at a time when the denomination has recorded its seventh straight year of membership declines and a consecutive drop in baptisms. Third today, according to All Africa, dozens of people, including women and children, have been killed in the Democratic Republic of Congo's South Kivu province. The state's governor blamed the attack on a dispute over cattle. South Kivu Governor Marcinel Shishabam told the Reuters news agency, It is a Congolese Republic of the Congo who have carried out these attacks. It was about a dispute over cows. The problem is that everyone in this area carries a weapon. South Kivu in the DRC is home to members of a tribe who fled Burundi after the end of the 2005 civil war. However, some Congolese Bafuliru tribe local blame rebels from Burundi's National Liberation Forces for the attack. Fourth today, according to Mashable, the U.S. economy added 217,000 jobs in May, according to a report Friday from the Bureau of Labor. That number on its own might not seem particularly notable as it lined up pretty well with economists' estimates. However, the latest report marked a milestone for the economy. There are now more jobs in the country than there were at the peak in early 2008, just before the recession took hold. There were 138,463 million jobs in the country last month, narrowly topping the 138,365 million jobs in the economy at the peak in January 2008. All in all, it took the U.S. economy nearly five years of recovery to return to that level. That marks the longest rebound from any recession since World War II. Fifth today, according to the Associated Press, the Navy says it has put a Virginia base on lockdown following a stabbing. The stabbing occurred Friday at Naval Support Academy Portsmouth Annex, which is home to Naval Medical Center Portsmouth. Social media posts by Navy Region Mid-Atlantic say a service member was stabbed. A suspect has not been caught. Traffic in and out of the base has also been halted. The stabbing victim's condition is not known, nor is a motive for the attack. Navy public affairs officials said they were still collecting details on the incident and would provide further details later. The annex is home to the nation's first naval medical center. Six today, according to the BBC, ex-Army Chief Abdul Fattah al-Sisi has been sworn in as Egypt's new president after a landslide win in May elections. He said his election was a democratic, peaceful handover of power that represented a historic moment and a turning point for the nation. Security officials were deployed at key locations around the capital for the ceremony at the Supreme Constitutional Court. 
The retired field marshal overthrew President Mohamed Morsi last July. He has since been pursuing a crackdown on Morsi's Muslim Brotherhood, which urged a boycott of the elections. Seven today, according to the Associated Press, more than 80 bodies have been found after a devastating flash flood in Afghanistan's mountainous and remote north, a provincial official said on Sunday, as police and villagers scoured the rugged terrain for missing people. Lieutenant Fazel Rama, the police chief in the Baglan province, said the death toll from Friday's flash flooding had climbed to 81 from 54. The flood destroyed some 850 homes across several villages and damaged more than 1,000, leaving thousands of people in need of shelter, food, water, and medicine. Eighth today, according to Fox News, Hillary Clinton said Sunday that she could wait until early next year to decide whether to run for president in 2016. Whether the former first lady will make a second White House bid continues to be the most talked about aspect of the upcoming race. Clinton, who is starting a tour this week to promote her new book, Hard Choices, told ABC's This Week, I just want to get through this year, travel around the country, sign books, help in the midterm elections in the fall, and then take a deep breath and kind of go through my pluses and minuses. Clinton, a Democrat, also said she's making no commitments about testifying before a select congressional committee investigating the 2012 deadly terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya which occurred when she was Secretary of State. Clinton talked the same day as the release of an ABC News Washington Post poll that shows that 69% of Democrats and Democrat-leaning independents supporting her for the party's nomination. Nine today, according to the New York Times, Karen DeCrow, who was president of the National Organization for Women during the 1970s, a turbulent period in which she helped lead campaigns for passage of the Equal Rights Amendment and against sex discrimination in education and sports, died on Friday at her home in Jamesville, New York, a suburb of Syracuse. She was 76 years old. The cause was melanoma, according to her longtime friend, Rowanda M Malamud, who is president of the Greater Syracuse Chapter of NOW. Ms. DeCrow was the group's current vice president. Ms. DeCrow was also a writer, a lawyer, and a tireless campaigner for women's rights. Tenth and finally today, according to the Associated Press, actor and comedian Tracy Morgan and two members of his entourage were in critical condition on Sunday, a day after a tractor trailer rammed into his chauffeur limousine bus, setting off a deadly chain reaction pileup. The former Saturday Night Live and 30 Rock cast member was returning from a stand-up show in Delaware early Saturday with six other people when the limo bus overturned on the New Jersey Turnpike near Cranberry Township, killing Morgan's mentor and fellow comedian James Jimmy Mack Bagnair. A Walmart truck driver was charged with death by auto and four counts of assault by auto. Jeffrey Malia, age 36, of Shelton, Connecticut, and comedian Artie Fouquet, a junior, 43, of Jersey City, were listed in critical condition along with Morgan at Robert Wood Johnson Hospital. Another comedian, Harris Stanton, was treated and released from the hospital on Saturday. The truck driver, 35-year-old Kevin Roper of Jonesboro, Georgia, accompanied by his attorney, turned himself in to state police. He was released on $50,000 bail on Saturday night. That's today's top 10 news stories. You can read these stories and more at urbanchristiannewsnetwork.com. As you go throughout this day, keep this word in mind. Habakkuk 3.19 says, The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights for the director of music on my stringed instruments. God loves you. He always has and he always will. He loves you so much that the Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, why don't you get to know him today? Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose by the power of God for you. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thanks so much for listening. I'm Daniela White with Urban Christian News Network. May God bless your day. <laughs>